Okay, so what you've seen so far um, are methods of numerically integrating, including the trapezium rule and the mid alternate rule, both of which um, have errors that are attached to them. And in some cases, they're really not good enough. In some cases, they're perfect. Straight lines, fantastic. But when it gets down to uh, curves, um, they can leave a little bit to, des to be desired. Um, so it can be best to um, estimate a curve using a quadratic instead. Okay, so um, let's say we had a curve that looks something like this. Okay, so then we had I'm trying to make these equal spaced, but it's not working so well. And now I'll smudge the ball. Let's go back and try that again. Right. right. Uh, do. Okay. So let's say I was estimating it between these two values here, okay? Then you could create a series of trapeziums, okay? Um, which we know how to do. You could do this using the mid-ordinate rule. Uh, both cases, you'll hit the problem of getting overestimates, underestimates, and it could be quite tricky, okay? Well, not tricky in the sense of calculating it, but I mean, um, you're not necessarily going to get a very good answer. Simpson's rule, um, well, he came up with this idea of approximating the curve using quadratics, using parabolas, okay? So using parabolas, because if you have, no, that's not a very good parabola, um, to define a parabola, you, all you need are three points. If you have three points, you can find the exact parabola that goes through um, that those three points. That's why there are three unknowns, A, B, and C, when you write down the general equation of a quadratic, of a parabola. Okay, Three unknowns, the three points can give you those. That gives you the specific Parabola. So if we come back to this example, what we could do is we could take each three points, so those three points, and find the parabola that goes through them. Then we could find have those three points here and find the parabola that goes through them. Then those three points and find the parabola that goes through them. And you get uh, a curve, almost, that looks a little bit closer than straight lines would give. Okay, so this is the idea. Now, the, uh, the actual formula for this can be a little hairy to calculate, to actually get to the exact formula. So, we're not going to go through that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to um, write down how you do it. Well, not how you find the formula, but the best way to remember it. So the integral is approximately equal to um, one third of h times by um, the sum of the end ordinates 
So this one plus this one, that one plus that one, because this was y0, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, and y6, okay? So that is y0 plus y6. These are your x ordinates, these are your y ordinates, okay? So it's the sum of the end ordinates, the first one and the last one, uh, plus four times the sum of the odd ordinates. So that's y1 plus y3 plus y5. So this, um, well, I'll get to that in a minute, plus two times the even ordinates. Okay, so it looks a little bit rough, um, a little bit nasty. Um, so in our case, it will be one third h times y zero plus y six plus four lots of y one plus y three plus y five plus two lots of y two plus y four. Look how none have been repeated, okay? Um, so that's the formula that we're going to use. That estimates the area between the curve and the x-axis. So an example. Um, This is the example that I'm going to work through. Um, this is going to be done with six strips. Okay, six strips. So we have to first work out the value of h. So that's the upper value, take away the lower value, divided by the number of strips. So that's 3 over 6, that's 0 0.5. Okay, so h is 0 0.5. So we're going to build ourselves a table of values. We're starting at 1. Uh, then we've got 0 0.5, uh, 1.5, sorry, because that's the width of the strip. Then 2, then 2.5, then 3, then 3.5, then 4. Okay. So when x is 1, so that gives us the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 strips, 7 ordinates, okay? Always have one more ordinate than strips. You might also have noticed that when, if you went back to the diagram, it re, uh, to use Simpson's rule, it requires you have an even number of strips. So you must have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. You can't use Simpson's rule with 11 strips, okay? Because you need to have um, two strips, like so, in order to get those three points to put your parabola, get your parabola to go through them, okay? So you need to ha always have an even number, multiple of two. So when x is 1, you have e to the 1 over 1, which is that. Then we have e to the 1.5 over 1.5, e to the 2 over 2, e to the 2.5 over 2.5, e to the 3 over 3, e to the 3.5 over 3.5, and e to the 4 over 4. So this is my y0, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6. Three, y4, y5, and y6. So the integral between 1 and 4 of e to the x over x dx is approximately equal to 1 third times h, so 1 third 
times 0.5, one half, times by the sum of the end ordinates. So that's e to the 1 over 1 plus e to the 4 over 4. That's the sum of the end ordinates. Plus 4 lots of the even ordinates. So that's what e2 over 2 plus e3 over 3. They're the uh, even ones. Oh, why have I done even ones? I should be doing odd ones. Oh dear. Can't even do it right myself. Uh, e to the 1.5 over 1.5. E to the 2.5 over 2.5. And E to the 3.5 over 3.5. Okay. Plus two lots of the evens. So that was e to the 2 over 2, and e to the 4, e to the 3 over 3, so. <sighs> right. So we've got to plug that into the calculator. Take your time with this one. There's a lot of things that could potentially go wrong. Okay. So, uh, e to the 4 over 4, okay, um, it's going to be difficult, so if you're going to write them down at each stage, you might want to uh, write them to several decimal places, so 4 times e to the 1.5 uh, divided by 1.5 plus e to the 2.5 divided by 2.5 plus e to the 3.5 divided by 3.5, just make sure that I've got that in right, yeah, it's very easy to go wrong if you're not careful, uh, plus 2 times e to the 2 divided by 2, plus e to the 3 divided by 3, okay, and then you've got to halve it, then you've got to have a third of that, so you get 17.73943756, which, well, dot, 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 which is approximately 17.7 to 3 significant figures. Okay, so I'm just going to use my calculator here to check whether that's reasonable. Um, you never know. Easy, very easy to make a mistake on this. No, that looks very good. Okay, the exact answer is 17.73575. Well, not exact answer, but um, a closer estimate. So this one is very good. Okay, much closer than the trapezium rule would likely have been. Okay, so that's how Simpson's rule works. Um, it's given to you in a much more complicated language, something nearing this in the formula booklet. You may want to memorize this so that you are, that helps you remember it for the exam.